Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the story of Jade Empire. No commentary involved. Have you changed your mind? My offer still stands. I will happily upgrade your flyer if you accept my mission. Do you want to retrieve the supplies for me? Very good. Here's your wind map. It'll show you where to go. I'll also pay extra if you get rid of those bandits plaguing the area. We can't take much more of this! Okay, another impact and we start losing pieces! Abandon the fight! We can't take much more of this! You have returned, and in one piece, I see. Not bad. You brought back the supplies and you took out a few bandits on your way. You can have a little bit extra for that. There were some great flyer parts among those supplies. Would you like to have a look at them? Or if you'd prefer, I could tell you about another mission I have for you. Yes, of course. I have some very interesting items now. So, would you like to hear about the mission I have for you? Excellent, I am most pleased. The Prefect of Shangdang County will be glad to hear he has an escort. His ships have taken a heavy toll lately. There are many raiders between here and the Prefect's home, and his ship is intended more for luxury and less for war. Get the Prefect home safely, and I will reward you well. The Prefect has also told me to offer you extra silver for destroying as many of the raiders as you can. The Prefect is anxious to be going. Here's your wind map, and remember, protect the Prefect's flyer at all costs.
Interesting strategy. Now try winning. It seems the I regret I have no more missions for you. Careful now, you'll dent something. Excellent work. The Prefect is happy to be home, safe, no doubt. I see you were able to dispatch a few of the raiders on your way. I'll top up your payment a little for that. Would you like to see some of my upgrades? Or could I interest you in doing another mission for me? Yes, of course. I have... So, would you like... I have received word that my associate is alive, if not well. He was shot down by Imperial Flyers while retrieving some sensitive information. Fly to the destination on the wind map and destroy anyone who attacks you. Drop off these parts so my associate can repair his ship and return. The area you will be flying into is private land, and by right only the Emperor's servants are allowed entrance. But there is a truth there that must be uncovered. Be careful. These Imperial Flyers are extremely dangerous. Good luck. Watch what you're doing.
You've done it. Chang, my associate, is on his way back. Here, I owe you this and more. I regret I have no more missions for you, but I'm always here if you require upgrades for your flyer. Thank you again. Yes, of course. I am honored that you have chosen me. If only I could find a way to put things right! Oh, hello. I'm sorry, I was just muttering to myself. I'm in some trouble and... Wait! You! You could help me! You're clearly not from around the Imperial City, and I need someone's help most desperately. Someone unaffected by the politics of this place. Well, you see, there's been a mix-up. No, an error. Oh, who am I kidding? Some bastard has changed my play! I am Incisive Chorus, the playwright. I'm sure you've heard of me. And if not, you have... Now, I suppose. One of my productions has been touring the countryside and catching people's attention. We were asked to bring it into the city and perform here in the Golden Way. The play must go on, but not as they want it. The play has been changed, you see. One very key piece of the play has been rewritten. Once you change this scene, you change the very soul of the production. It's hardly my play at all if they perform it their way. They've changed it from a commentary of man's inhumanity to man to a satire of the Empire. I tell you truthfully that they've lost the whole point of the piece. A like-minded island amidst a sea of dolts. Oh dear, that was a poor metaphor. The point stands, regardless. I'm certain the Lotus Assassins would blame me for the satire. I will gladly offer you the going rate for a leading man, just for a walk-on part. I need you to take a role in the play and read the role the, uh, original way. You have a most regal bearing, so I'd expect you'd have no... Well, no major problems, at any rate, acting the role of Lady Fourteen Flowers. I think you should do it. You'd make a wonderful Lady Fourteen Flowers. If you talk to First Degree Thespian Fong up by the pagoda, tell him you're the replacement actor. He'll be desperate, so all you'll have to do is read the proper lines. Of course, all the roles are played by men, uh, or at least women with the decency to pose as men playing women. It, it's, well, it can get complex sorting it all out. Here's a copy of the original script for your scene. Pivotal, I assure you. This copy reads properly, not like that edited pile of dung. Hurry over to the large pagoda overlooking the Golden Way, and tell Fong that you're the replacement. They won't wait forever, so step quickly to it! Remember, you'll have to memorize your lines. No scripts on stage, of course. Also, make sure you read from this script. Now good... No, you're about to perform, so I shan't jinx it. Get to it!
Shouldn't visiting ministers have more dignified accommodations? Ah, my good friend! What a pleasant surprise to see you here in the glory that is the Imperial City. Well, everywhere but here, it seems. Woe is to Minister Sheng that the only place available was this filthy dark house. You were not alone in that assumption. It seems it was recently procured and has not been modified for ministry use yet. Remember that the Ministry of Harmony controls executions and taxations. I shudder to think which landed them ownership of this fine establishment. Ah, oh, well. Minister Sheng has not forgotten how you helped him with his troubles in Tian's Landing. Without your efforts, the Great Dam might still be open. However, I'm afraid I don't have time to speak with you right now. I have to prepare my report for Judge Fang, by which I mean to watch over this honor gift. Yes, a valuable offering for the mighty Judge Fang. Without it, he might turn me away before I can even make my report, condemning me to the horrors of Tian's Landing forever. But with this gift, he is certain to appreciate the depth of my admiration and respect. So much so that he might give me a new posting right here in the Imperial City. Understandably, with so much riding on this gift, I am loath to leave it in the care of these Imperial soldiers appointed to watch over me during my visit. The Ministry of Harmony offers pitiful wages, and I do not put much stock in the purchased loyalty of these guards particularly toward Minister Sheng. Perhaps, but Minister Sheng has waited far too long and worked far too hard for this opportunity to return to the Imperial City. The honor gift is the key to securing my return, and I will not let it out of my sight until it is safely delivered to Judge Fang's greedy hands. Although my vigil has become somewhat taxing, Minister Sheng has not slept in nearly two days. But it's a small price to pay to buy my way back to the Imperial City. I've heard rumors of distasteful behavior. Things to make the skin go pale and the stomach churn. After all, Minister Sheng is a cultured man of delicate constitution. But more importantly, I know Judge Fang is a man who appreciates the value of a worthy offering. Hence, the honor gift I will present him. Minister Sheng wishes you a fond farewell. Be sure you experience the full wonders of the Imperial City while you're here. Shang's pretty protective of that honor gift. Must have cost him a fortune. Minister Sheng hasn't slept in two days. I guess he doesn't trust us. Judge Fang hired us to keep an eye on the ministers coming in to make their reports. Shang's pretty protective. Minister Sheng. Judge Fang. Excuse me, you're in my way, and I'm trying to keep an eye out for our replacement actor. You? You're the replacement? Well, why aren't you in costume? If you're going to be playing Lady Fourteen Flowers, you'll need your dress! There's no time for you to run back and get yours. I'm sure we can find one to fit in the back, though most of our performers are less... broad. Did they give you a copy of the script when they sent you over here? Damn your guild's myopic planning! Luckily for you, I expect the worst from them and pulled a copy from the back. Here, take it. The script's recently been revised, so even if you're familiar with the old version, read it again for the changes before you head on stage.
well. A southern noble funded the location and travel for us, but wanted to make a few tweaks. We couldn't afford to miss the exposure. Our writer wasn't that happy, but we accepted the revisions, and here we are. I'm sure your Actors Guild told you that we have standard rates. We'll happily pay you the going rate for a lead, especially since this is short notice. Ruin your scene and you get nothing. Just like normal. Understand? Just get at least half the lines correct and the crowd will figure out what's happening. Any less than that and it becomes one of those obscure plays no one likes. Now, read that script over. Come talk to me when you've got it and we'll get you into final costume and onto the stage. Have you read the script? Do you feel one with Lady Fourteen Flowers yet? Why are you guild actors all the same? Isn't the money motivation enough? Look, you're playing a noble lady in the court of the First Emperor Sagacious Tien. Your scene is opposite another noble, Fortunate Puzzle. You're bringing word to the court that the Emperor has halted his advance on the Horse Lords. Uh, what else? You're kind of sad, depressed even. There, if you're as professional as the Guild said you'd be, that should be enough to work on. That's the spirit! Let's get you into the back and costumed up, Lady Fourteen Flowers. Watch closely. We shall see if the informant was accurate. Imagine, condemning the Jade Empire at its heart. The fools. All of Heaven's blessings guide him, but Sagacious Tien has been absent from the palace for such a time. His conquests of the Northern Kingdoms have kept his light from us. All the scattered kingdoms have seen the light of his rule, and our emperor's advisors grow in number. 
the arable lands to the south, all the way to the useless jungles, which were left as nothing for the Monkey King, are fused into the mighty Jade Empire. To the east, Sagacious Tien has spread his light to the very waters themselves, and lo, to the west, he found enlightenment among the hills of the Six Holy Scrolls. But what word from the wastes of the Horse Lords? Aha! What is this? White is Lady Fourteen Flowers. We can only hope she brings word. My dearest Lady Fourteen Flowers, under what banner does your entourage travel today? Peace in the North? Could this be? Have all the Horse Lords been subjugated so easily? Heaven smiles upon the Empire today. Your arrival here is certainly welcome, as your kingdom is one of the most recent to join the Jade Empire. We have had word that the hostilities have ceased. Tell me, most gracious lady, when was this momentous decision reached? You phrase that most interestingly, Lady Fourteen Flowers. Why do I sense there is more to this story? But surely the might of the Jade Empire is unquestionable, and our will to victory unswayed. And tell me, most gracious madam, when the final blow was struck, where was our noble leader? Deep in the wastes of the North? Surely you mean the far edge. The horse lord camps broken behind him. There's been nothing but the gentle drafts of spring here in the Imperial City for weeks. With such a chill in the air, was this some time ago? My lady, I sense that there is more to your story than I have gleaned. Perhaps my own perceptions blind me. It seems to me that some part of your story remains untold. Do my questions block the truth? Tell me this, if nothing else, good lady. When the cry for peace rose up, who was it that our great emperor turned to? The heavens had turned to him? These words, are they riddles? Wait, what word is this from the front? The Emperor sends word of his return. The Horse Lords are unconquered, but our forces were undefeatable. What happened to cease the expansion of the Empire, dear lady? A celestial event, most auspicious. And so, our most noble emperor saw a sign from the heavens. Our mighty armies, poised to crush the horse lords and stretch the empire to the ends of the earth, but we stopped. For now, even I see that there are limits to ambition, and overreaching those limits invites nothing but disaster. All praise the emperor! for his wisdom is infinite. 
My lady, you have my deepest thanks for bringing this news to us. I shall inform the court immediately. What in the dragon's eye was that? I saw no trees in there. Oh, the informant will suffer for a lifetime. You there, Lady Fourteen Flowers. The crowd loved it. Fantastic performance. You managed to hit every line perfectly. <laughs> At least we know you'll have something to fall back on if our other endeavors fail. Our sponsor may not be happy with the version you read, but I've always preferred the old version of the play anyway. I guess Incisive Chorus put you up to this, because I know I gave you the new script to study. <laughs> Good for him. I believe I owe you an actor's fee. Enjoy. I'm glad you were here to fill in. We would have sunk faster than a bottomless boat without a solid Lady Fourteen Flowers on hand. Rather fun. Now I know you're not one of the guild actors. They're never positive about anything. Oh well, no harm done, I'm sure. The performance wouldn't have gone on without you, professional actor or not. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have things I must attend to. We are not as backwards as the out. That Outlander finally got his due. Hopefully, he's learned to be more tolerant. It's finally safe to go back to the Scholar's Garden now that the Outlander has been dealt with. It's about time somebody dealt with that annoying Outlander. So, you're the new fighter in town. Oh, good, another. Ah, at last, peace and tranquility have returned to the Scholar's Garden. I've seen some strange... Had your, uh, moment, did you? I never attend my own plays. No, much too nerve-wracking. Someone goes for me. She is very kind to do that. I heard how it went. Fantastic! The scholars loved it! One's already asked for a copy of the manuscript. I'm sure there will be more. Perhaps as many as three. Here, I promised you this, and you should have it. Yes, that's it. Enjoy, and thank you so much. Oh, so much to do. So many, uh, copies to make. Yes! Ha! Don't worry, Sung Tao. I'm doing everything I can to prove you're innocent.
Good day, sir. Are you the new investigator I sent for? No, I can tell from your attire that you're not from a ministry. Oh, this is terrible. Everyone I send for disappears. There are powers at work here that are beyond my means to control. I am Prefect Jitong. It is my duty to ensure that convicted criminals in the city are sentenced appropriately. But there are complications with my current trial. I have in my custody a suspected slave trader, Chandler Ling. But one of the high-ranking ministers is trying to get him released, and he wants me to convict another man. The man they want to accuse, Scholar Sun Tao, is a friend of mine, and I'm certain of his innocence. I need you to find proof so I can present it to the Minister of Justice. Really? You will help me? Thank you! Thank you so very much. I need to find proof that Ling is the guilty one, and by so doing, exonerate Song Tao. If I can't prove Ling's guilt, I'll be forced to sentence Song Tao to death. But every time I ask someone to discover the truth, they disappear or turn up dead. Our best lead is Zi Bao, the last person known to have spoken with Ling before his arrest. But Bao knows me and my men. He won't talk to us. I've known Scholar Song Tao for several years. His uncle and my father were good friends. I only wish I knew why the governor wants him accused of this crime. If you want to know more about Song Tao, you should speak with him yourself. Chandler Ling is a well-respected businessman and merchant here in the city. Until recently, I had no reason to suspect him of any wrongdoing. When I investigated Ling's shop, I found a valuable knife that I had purposely entrusted to one of my men, a man who has since disappeared. Chandler Ling had a knife belonging to a man whose body couldn't be found. That was all the evidence I required. I have no idea. The two men were seen together before we arrested Ling, but I have no other information about Zi Bao. He spends most of his time in the heart of the Empire Tavern, and he doesn't seem to have dealings with anyone else besides Chandler Ling. I know if I went to speak with him, I would get nowhere, but you could speak to him without raising suspicion. I wish there was something concrete I could tell you. They're like a whisper on the wind or a shifting shadow. You think you see something and then there's nothing. Whoever is behind the slavers must have a great deal of power. To remain that invisible is a hard thing to do. Good. Look for him in the heart of the Empire Tavern. It's upstairs at the Imperial Arena. Don't scare him away. If we lose him, we lose our last connection to Ling. A difficult situation to be placed in. I hope we are up for the challenge. I don't know why you're wasting your time. I'm obviously innocent, and yet you still want to risk yourself needlessly. I'm no fool. Those men haven't returned, and I can assure you it isn't because they've decided to take a holiday. Chasing after criminals is dangerous work. Obviously, there are risks involved. Why would you risk yourself when even the local minister seems content with the scholar's arrest? What's to tell? I'm a merchant and quite a good one. My clients are usually very happy with my goods. 
You likely haven't heard of me simply because I have a very elite clientele. The average person on the street cannot afford the items I sell. Other than my occupation, I suspect we are very much the same, you and I. Though I happen to be a little more restricted than you at the moment. Doing? I wasn't doing anything more than I usually do in a day's work. I was selling my wares to a few of my preferred clients. Prefect Jitong was one of them. The next thing I know, guards confiscate my goods and tell me I'm suspected of slave trading. It was likely the most ludicrous thing I've ever been told. Of course, the prefect claims that some of my items belong to his missing men, but that doesn't mean I took the items from their lifeless bodies. In a given day, I meet with several buyers and probably twice as many sellers. There are always more sellers than buyers. My job is to determine whether something is worth buying, not whether the seller is worth buying from. If I see a bargain, I don't care who the seller is. Suffice to say, those items could be from any number of sellers. I don't recall who sold them to me, but that certainly doesn't make me guilty of slave trading. I can honestly say I had never met or heard of the man until he was arrested. He's obviously not wealthy enough to be one of my clients. Apparently, he spends a good deal of time with the poorer folk in the city. No doubt that's why he is under suspicion. Doesn't strike you as a bit odd? A scholar with all the benefits that position entails, choosing to spend time with the poor people. It does seem a little suspicious. No more than you've heard for yourself, I'm sure. They are a myth. A rumor, really. Nobody has ever seen them, and nobody has any proof they exist. And yet, there is still a belief that they exist. Madmen terrorizing the poor and abducting the helpless. It all seems very... superstitious. Abducting a person isn't like picking someone's pocket, you know. There would be evidence, signs of a struggle. But people will believe what they want to. Of course, do what you need to. If you discover anything, it will only prove my innocence further. Good luck. So you think you can free me? Prefect Jitong has sent many good men to their deaths trying to free me. I hope you won't get into similar trouble. Well, that's what Jitong fears. I have no reason to doubt him. Besides, why else would the men not return and their belongings suddenly appear on the market? Pure coincidence. It's not proof. It's purely circumstantial. Anyone will tell you that. At any rate, it seems likely that's what has happened to the men. I feel terrible for them, but I have my own problems to deal with, as you can see. I am a scholar, though still a junior scholar by most regards. I assist the philosophers and scholars with their work. It's a good life, though I can't help feeling guilty sometimes. The scholars and philosophers have many privileges, while so many live with so little. I spend my spare time in the poor quarters, helping where I can. If I have any extra money, I use it to help the people there. It's not much, but I like to think it helps. I don't know. I was just down in the poor quarters, helping a family with some repairs on their hut. I was leaving their house when the guards came for me. They told me I was suspected of abducting people from the poor quarters. I told them it was ridiculous, that I only wanted to help the poor, but they didn't listen. I admit I spend time in the poor quarters, but I don't try to hide it. I'm there several times a week, in fact, usually in plain sight of everyone. Well, nothing really. I'd never heard of him before this. I heard what Ji Tong said about him, but that's about it. He seems decent enough, I suppose. Nothing. 
I've heard rumors in the past few months. The residents in the poor areas were getting worried, though I never knew anyone who disappeared. One of the girls I helped out in the poor area said her uncle had disappeared, but I never met him. She was devastated, of course, and she blamed the slavers. But it was all just speculation. No one had ever seen anyone being abducted. There wasn't even evidence of struggles or violence. I don't know what else to tell you. I understand. If there's anything that might help you find the slave traders, I will gladly tell you. Please, don't give up until you've found them. You should stay a while and relax. There are rumors flitting about the city that you seek the attentions of the executioners. These rumors come from the palace itself, leaving me intrigued. You are a novice with no standing in the arena. What makes you think you are of any interest to me? I have no instruction to give. If you want to catch my eye, you need to show me that your skills are far beyond the norm. I will be here if you wish to petition me further, but I don't acknowledge anything less than the best. Return when you are worthy, and no sooner. Sisayiri furkt wasayir napsan. Otonawe. Busy, busy. You return once again to interrupt lust. That's it. What do you want? Do I know you? Really? Lots of people know me. So what? I'm a little busy right now. I've got a bowl of wine that needs drinking, so why don't you just find someone else to bother? What slave traders would that be? I've never heard of anybody trading slaves around here. Who? I don't know anybody by that name, and I don't know anything about slave traders. Leave me alone. I have nothing to say to you, so why don't you just keep moving? Yes, yes that is. More than I'd see in a month. I might be able to take you there. You'll have to pay me now, and I'm not promising you won't get killed once we get there. It's your life, friend. No refunds, either. Follow me. Zibao, what is the meaning of this? Summoning me to this place was bad enough. You know I can't stand the stench of these beasts. I've already dealt with the last shipment of slaves, and with that damned prefect poking into our affairs, we have to be extra cautious. Now, there's an unknown quantity in this little meeting. Just who are you? Song Tao, isn't that the fool who's taking the fall for Chandler Ling? Well, you've overheard your evidence. Too bad you won't get to tell anyone. Ziba was a fool to bring anyone here. We can't afford anyone nosing into our affairs right now, and you've heard too much. 
Get him, boys. But don't kill him. We'll get quite a bit of silver for this one. Legendary strike. Paralyzing fall. Legendary strike. This has gone far enough. You're far better than the last dog who dared cross us. Maybe I was hasty in my decision to attack you. I have an eye for raw talent. That helps when picking slaves, but it comes in handy in sizing up potential allies. Who are you, and why are you here? You're clearly too skilled to be one of the fools hired by Prefect Shitong. So what business or grudge do you have with us? You are with Zhitong. <laughs> Unless he was dipped in silver recently, there's no way he could afford a warrior of your skill. Not on government pay. You're better than that. You've just shown me your strength. Any poor wretch who had the discipline to fight like you wouldn't let themselves be enslaved. Someone like you deserves to work with me, not oppose me. I have a friend who could use your help, and I'm prepared to pay for it. If only I had a silver coin for every time I've heard that. Come then. Let's end it. Staff! Style! Legendary Staff! I'm not really in the mood for company. Get rid of him? What do you mean? Remove him from office or something else? Really? I was hoping you wanted to kill him. The world would be a better place with that disgusting pig dead and buried. But as much as I want to see his bloated corpse floating in the gutter, Feng is a dangerous man, and he keeps my pockets lined with silver. I hope Feng gets what he deserves, but you'll have to do it without my help. No. Even if I was willing to give up all that silver, if Feng finds out, he'll make sure I spend the rest of my days begging for death. It's not worth the risk.
Wow, that is a lot of silver. And I'd love to get out from under Fang's boot heel. I'll help you. You wanted Fang dead, right? It sounds like he deserves death, but I don't know if the Inquisitors would agree. It'd be easier to kill him. Fang's reputation is already as dirty as it can get. As long as it doesn't get in the way of his job, everybody just turns a blind eye. Well, every document Judge Fang approves has to be stamped with his Imperial Ring. Losing the ring is a major offense. And if it was revealed he lost the ring during one of his sexual escapades, even Fang wouldn't want that to come out. What are you doing here, Breezes? You know I don't like it when people see us together in public. Don't be mad, my mighty and manly Fang. I was just hoping we could go upstairs for a bit. I've got a treat for you. Here's a hint. They're silk. I'm surprised you're so eager after last night. I'm glad to see you're finally becoming more receptive to my uh, special needs. Well done, Breezes. If a little tame for my tastes. I think tonight you should wear the blindfold. I have some interesting surprises in store for you. I... I can hardly wait, oh great and virile Fang. Here's the ring. Fang will do anything to keep people from finding out he lost it to a whore, even if it means resigning his post. Show the ring to his guards and they'll let you through. I better disappear for a while, but make sure you tell him where you got it. He'll be sorry he ever touched me. We already told you, Fang doesn't want to be bothered. He just wants to relax and watch the arena fights. Yeah, if he doesn't get his daily fill of blood, violence, and gore, he'll be snarly all day. And he's hard enough to work for when he's in a good mood. How did you get... No, forget it. I don't want to know. You better go talk to Fang about that ring. Yeah, we don't want any part of this. Some of these new fights can be delightfully savage. Damn it! I want more blood down there! Do you mind? How can I enjoy the crack of bone, the screams of pain, and the glorious geysers of crimson blood down in the arena with you bothering me? Or are you here to offer me your services for later? I, I generally prefer women, but I... Might branch out if a handsome man like you is willing to beg? Is that so? <laughs> Let me guess. Some sense of moral outrage at my perversions, no doubt. Well, my tastes are already well known at the Imperial Court. Nobody cares about my predilections. As long as I don't let my activities interfere with my duties as a judge. My ring? But how... That harlot. I should have suspected something when she came to me willingly. Usually I have to command her presence. Well, it seems you have me in an awkward position... I can't let it be known that I was foolish enough to let a whore steal my ring. I would lose my position. So, what is it you want from me? 
Silver? An Imperial posting? What? Of course. Now I understand. The Lotus Assassins are behind this, aren't they? I should have known something like this would happen. They tried to bend me to their will, but I'm not easily broken. Or so I thought. Are you proud of yourself? Bowing and scraping at the feet of your Lotus Assassin masters, helping them to bring me down? You think I'm an evil man, don't you? You think my soul is rotten and corrupt. But at least I have a soul. The same cannot be said for those you now serve. The Lotus Assassins destroyed me. But now that I am gone, I wonder where their attention will turn next. Keep a close watch over your shoulder, friend. My resignation is on the table. Take it and stamp it with my imperial ring yourself. Panar nuko iwa ir nika sanari iruru ni nua sa ir kana sata tau ir wo na wa fu kono su kud ni a awa fwa ir su tok u sa ir kokanato tanat dia katana no shafato yo kokanato si ir ipano niko wo nika suri ir kwana no kuni uk na wa te ir nik ni pi ir. Irkana, o nika suri ir kwana no kasa ir. So things are looking up. You've gained the favor of the Lotus Assassins. With the recommendation of the Inquisitor, the others will welcome you as a recruit. You can slip into the very heart of their lair. You could also go to the arena and seek the favor of the Executioner, but it isn't necessary now. A path to the Lotus Assassin Fortress is open. And after we find the evidence against Death's Hand, you will take us to the palace to find Master Lee? I promise, little Dawnstar. After we get what I want from the Lotus Assassins, the palace is the first place we will go. You have permission so there won't be any trouble entering. It's only after we have the evidence against Death's Hand that they might notice something is wrong. It would still be good to get some information first. Sagacious Zoo might know something. We should ask him. Where... where is he? Well, you should be more careful of who you trust.
That is true. I wouldn't trust any of the ragged homeless you have collected. No offense meant to those of you who are actually homeless, Dawn Star. If Sagacious Zoo has gone to warn the Lotus Assassins, you need to move quick. If he's just run off, he is no longer our concern. Zoo would not turn on us. The Lotus Assassin Fortress is in the far end of the Necropolis. They shouldn't give you any trouble. Just appear confident as you enter. I suppose it is wise to secure the recommendation of both, but please speak to me before you enter the fortress. This troubles me. The Executioner in the arena will want you to demonstrate your ability as a combatant. Finish with him and hurry back. Do not hesitate for too long. Sagacious Zoo's sudden flight has made our task somewhat more urgent. Time to bloody my axes! There you are! The governor sent Ho Chong, one of his lapdogs, to oversee the trial. I hope you learn something, or I'll have to proceed with Song Tao's sentencing. He took you there? That's incredible. That's remarkable. Well, what did you find? Have you discovered evidence that exonerates Scholar Song Tao? Ha! That doesn't prove a thing. Pieces of paper can be bought and sold just like anything. Just like anyone. I'm afraid you're quite mistaken, Chandlerling. This proves a great many things, including your guilt. I never suspected the slavers were so well connected. Let me see that. Hmm. Well, this certainly looks interesting. I... Ah, suppose Scholar Sung Tao can go free then. And you, Chandlerling, will come with me for sentencing. It will be quick and harsh, I suspect. This sort of thing will not be tolerated in the Empire. It's all a lie. You don't know what you're doing. You're all making a very big mistake. Thank you. Thank you for risking yourself to help me. If there's anything I can do to repay you, please ask. You are too kind. I have no real way to repay you. However, I do have some items you might be interested in. They're not here, of course. Come and find me in the Scholar's Garden, and I will be glad to show you what I have. I'll see you there. Goodbye, and thank you again. The least he could have done is bought us some wine. Hello there, and thanks again for all your help. Scholar Song Tao and I owe you a great debt of gratitude. Hello.
Hello again. What can I do for you today? Here you go. Ufna akna ir Yakova krui ni rui kuper fita. Please, Prevair, don't send me in there. I'm scared those things will see me before I can get into the cave. Please, don't make me do it. Wernurk apayir, wernurk akniir, ni usota. Mo wogiri ka ti tarir kone of atanir. Please don't hurt my mother. I'll get the artifact for you. I promise. Seir sukut ak newo kup kipstir sunuk. Only cowards threaten children. What do you want? You're working for Prevair Shuji, aren't you? Please don't tell him I haven't gone yet. I'm going now, even though it will probably get me killed. I'm sorry, I'm just a little upset. I, I'm Jinlin. Is there something you want? Thanks, but I need to find a way to kill spirits. Purveyor Shuji wants me to fetch an artifact from an emperor's tomb in the necropolis, but it's filled with ghosts. The purveyor is... He threatened to sell my mom to slave traders if I don't get this artifact. I don't know what to do. I can't fight ghosts. Sure. What do you want to know? My father worked for Purveyor Shuji until he died. He left last week to retrieve the same artifact for the Purveyor. The ghosts must have killed him. When my father disappeared, he had some of the purveyor's equipment. Now purveyor Shuji says we must repay him. My mother works for him, but I don't know where he's taken her. And I have to sneak around ghosts and other beasts to fetch the purveyor's trinkets and baubles. I only know what Shuji told me, and that's not much. He called it a pestle and mortar. It's a bowl and a mixer, I think. He said it had something to do with a recipe. I don't know if you use it to make something, or if the recipe is in the bowl already. Anyway, the purveyor is very interested in it. I've never seen him so anxious. Purveyor doesn't do that kind of work. He likes to get other people to do it for him. Besides, the tomb is locked from the inside. But there's a small opening. He says I'm small enough to fit through the crack in the wall. I don't mind that as much as the ghosts. The tomb is filled with them. Once I'm in, I'll just be killed. Really? It would be very dangerous. And I don't have anything to give you in return. Are you sure you want to do this? Thank you. You are very kind. My father would have liked you, I think. He was brave like you are. The tomb is over in the necropolis. The door is locked, but I can sneak inside and open it. I just have to be careful not to alert the ghosts. If you really think you can get rid of the ghosts, I'll head over to the tomb and wait for you there. Great! I'll wait by the steps of the Emperor's tomb. I'm sure you'll find it easily enough. See you soon, I hope.
Have you heard the news? Judge Fang is gone, and his replacement is none other than me. Minister Sheng finally gets his just reward. Or should I say, Judge Sheng? At last, my triumphant return to the Imperial City. Oh, so many things to prepare, so many things to do. Yes, Minister, I mean Judge Sheng has earned it. After the suffering of my great exile, the Imperial City welcomes me back to its bosom. Please excuse me, Judge Sheng really doesn't have the time to chat. I must make preparations for my transfer back to the Imperial City. I can't believe Sheng is head of the Ministry of Harmony. What's the world coming to? I can't... I'm sorry, I can't speak with you now. It would be unwise for me to associate with someone of your affiliations. I'm... Good day again. You've done a great deal to aid me. If there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. I've got some interesting items if you'd like to see them. <laughs> 